one of the teachings that the four Nijans hold in common is that dukkha, suffering or stress, comes from a sense of lack. And that the lack is something we create. We don't normally think in those terms. A lack is often something given. In other words, it's what we start out with. We have to find something to fill the lack. We rarely ever think that we're the ones who are creating the lack to begin with. That puts a different perspective on things. If the lack is a given that we willy-nilly have to fill up, we do have a tendency to just fill it up with anything. It's like a person who's hungry. If you can't get good food, then you get other kinds of food, or like the coyotes. You look at their scat, and it's amazing to see what they put in their mouths. Plastic rope sometimes, just to fill up the lack. But if we can turn around and see how we create the lack, then we don't have to worry about filling it up. And so this is a good question to ask yourself. Where are you creating a sense of lack? And oftentimes you'll find that it has to do with your identity, the things that you identify as you or yours tend to have a big hole in them. As the Buddha said, our identity as a being comes from attachment, and beings have to subsist on food. So the attachment is the lack. And we hold on to things thinking that they will fill the lack, but it's interesting to think that the things we're holding on to are the things that are actually creating the lack to begin with. So how do you create a sense of fullness instead? That's a Thai, Thai idiom, dem jai, literally means full heart. And you can interpret it in two ways, though. The idiomatic meaning is actually being fully willing to do something. If you're dem jai about something, it means you gladly do it. You give your whole heart. There was one time I was translating a passage from a John Lee, and it was giving me trouble because it didn't seem to make sense. And I included the term dem jai. And I took it to John Fu and asked him what it might mean. And it was one of the longest Dharma talks I got out of a John Fu. Talked for a long time about the different meanings of dem jai in that phrase. And from his point of view, it had lots of different meanings. First, there was the idiomatic meaning of being fully willing to do something, fully giving yourself to the practice. When you have a wholehearted attitude toward what you're doing. You find that you can fill up a lot of what might be lacking in your practice. If you don't have a wholehearted attitude, that's where you're going to find the lacks. This is missing, that's missing. The pieces don't fit together, they're not coming together, because you're holding back an important piece, the fullness of your heart, your wholehearted attitude. But he also interpreted it as meaning having a a broad heart, a broad awareness. This, of course, relates to the way John Lee teaches meditation and the way the Buddha taught meditation, being fully aware of the body, having what he called a, an enlarged mind or a heightened mind. In other words, an awareness that spreads, it, spread, <coughs> spreads its range all around.
that's another way in which we create a lack, is that we don't allow our awareness to be all around. We make it very narrow, very confined, focus on a few things, a few issues that we worry over. But we often worry about things that really don't give us any fullness. Like that image from John Lee about the dog chewing on a bone. And whatever meat was ever on the bone, it's not there anymore, but you keep chewing on it. The dog keeps chewing on it, and all it gets is the taste of its own saliva. No wonder it's hungry. It's chewing on something that gives it no satisfaction at all. We narrow our awareness to things that give no fullness to the mind, no fullness to our awareness, no satisfaction. So of course we're going to be hungry, of course we're going to have a sense of lack. This is why it's an important step in the meditation to learn how to expand your awareness so it fills the whole body. And a good way to do that is to expand your sense of the breath. Think of the breath not just as the air coming in out of the lungs, but the energy flow throughout the body. This gives you something all around the body to look at, all around the body to be sensitive to. As you work with the breath energies in the different parts of the body, you finally get a sense that they begin to connect up, and they're not fighting with one another. So when you breathe in, the entire range of your nerves, the entire range of your, your body, even the area around the body, the energy field around the body, it's all connected, it's all in harmony. That creates a sense of fullness in the body. As you, you may have noticed, when you do have that sense of fullness in the breath, the question of being hungry, the question of being thirsty just goes away. At the same time, your awareness is full. It's not being confined to one little area. And that in and of itself just feels good, but it's also very useful. Because if you look carefully, you begin to notice that when a distracting thought comes up, the simple fact of keeping that thought in your range of awareness requires that you create a little marker to remind yourself of the thought from moment to moment. And that marker is usually a little bit of tension someplace in the body. If you can locate that little bit of tension. You just breathe right through it and the thought will go away. This way your understanding what's going on becomes much more all around. You begin to realize that what's going on in the mind is not just in some mental realm without any effect on the body. It's connected to what's going on in the body as well. The area of physical sensations and mental sensations. These two areas actually overlap. And by having an all-around awareness like this, you begin to see the connections between the two of them. Because sometimes something comes up in the body and have an effect on the mind. Something comes up in the mind have an effect on the body. Sometimes a little stirring will appear, and it's not really clear at the very beginning whether it's going to be a physical or a mental event. And then you place a perception on it, and it goes one way or the other. But it's actually both. And you can't see this, though, unless you have this larger awareness. This awareness is really full. And so those are two of the meanings of Dem Jai that are really useful when you think about this way you're creating a lack and how you can learn how to stop creating that sense of lack. And create a sense of fullness instead. Fullness of heart, fullness of mind. Because remember, in, in the Buddhist teachings, the word jitta means both heart and mind. He uses the word in context, some, place, some places where we would use the word heart in English, like a heart of metta. It's metta, jitta. And sometimes it's just the thinking side. The thoughts you have, 
That's also the citta. And it's important to see there's no real distinction between the two. Your thoughts have desires that go along with them, and your desires have their thoughts, they have their reasons. It's not that your desires or your emotions are primary and your thoughts are secondary. They come together. And if you learn to look at them from both sides, you begin to see how they take over, how they take hold, how they can create a sense of lack, or how they can be used to create a sense, to create a sense of fullness. It's only when you see them from all sides that you can actually use them skillfully. And it's certainly when you bring a wholehearted attitude to the practice that you get a whole mind understanding of what's going on. So it's a good question to ask yourself every day, where am I creating a sense of lack? And what can I do to not create that sense of lack? How can I create a sense of fullness instead? Not in the ordinary way of keeping the lack and then trying to fill it up with whatever comes to hand. But seeing where you have that sense of lack and undoing it, often the sense of lack is just that. You're not giving yourself fully to the practice. There are the times that you've allowed your awareness to get very narrow, very confined. And of course it's going to feel like something is missing. So try to give your whole heart to this practice of creating a whole body awareness. It gives you a new perspective on the contents of your mind and the contents of your heart and the events going on in the body. They're all connected. And the more you maintain this larger awareness, the more clearly you'll be able to see that. And take advantage of it.